Just got my new 6.5 Creedmoor in the X-Bolt Browning. And I've been messing with the trigger a little bit and it seems to be pretty heavy, so I wanna change that and this is how you do it. You're gonna need a trigger pull gauge, an Allen wrench set, and a knife. And it's actually a really simple process. I've done it on guns before, so I just wanna get this one um, situated before I go out and sight it in. So this is how you change the trigger pull poundage on your Browning x -Bolt. And at the moment we are at 5.79 pounds, which it's pretty heavy for me. I like my guns to be around the four pounds-ish mark. Um, I feel as a Western hunter, being around some like pretty rugged country, rugged setups, it's nice to have that little bit of hardiness to the trigger, but not be heavy. Like that almost feels sticky at five pounds, seven ounces. On this gun right here, there's this housing around the trigger and the magazine. If I pop this magazine out, there's these two uh, Allen wrench bolts right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. You're gonna notice there's two bolt lengths just by a little, just by barely a, a difference. The longer one goes in the back, so make sure you remember that. If I get those two off, I can pull this housing off super easy. And once I pull this housing off, there's a screw right here with the red sealant right in front of the trigger. And the knife comes into play right here. You're gonna pop that sealant off of that Allen wrench screw so you can actually get your Allen wrench in there. I'm going to loosen this screw out from the trigger. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, it's on the trigger. If you go to the right, it's gonna make your trigger stiffer to a point where you might not even be able to pull the trigger. If you go left, it's gonna back it out from the trigger spring and it's gonna loosen it up. So like I said, I'm gonna to try to get this trigger to pop at about the four pounds mark. And a little bit goes a long ways. I was at five pounds, seven ounces. So I'm about a quarter of an inch backed out from the, the, where it was sitting before. And I'm going to see where I'm at now. Three pounds, six ounces. That's a bit light. I'm gonna continue to go in just a bit. I just want a full revolution. So after that, I'm at four pounds, 3.9 ounces. And that's right where I'm gonna keep it at. Tested a couple times, feels really good to my touch. Feels really good. So now that I have that, that screw is gonna sit right there in that same place, backed out about, looks like a quarter of an inch. Um, and I'm done manipulating that the trigger pull. So back to putting this housing on. Trigger goes through the trigger hole, trigger hole. The housing presses into place. The longer screw goes in the back towards the trigger. Shorter screw goes in the front. So, trigger housing's back on. Magazine's back in place. The gun's put back together, and I'm gonna test it one last time. And it's right at four pounds, so we're good to go. So, it's common on a trigger pull gauge that you're gonna get a little bit slightly different readings every time. That's because it's a micro adjustment tool, so if I happen to just pull a little bit harder past the trigger going off, on one test and don't do it on another one, it's gonna fluctuate a little bit. Um, so they're extremely accurate, but then it comes down to like how much human influence you're putting on it. So it's not alarming to get different readings, slightly different readings all the time, as long as it stays within the same, the same deal. So I have a 4.08 reading right there on the last time. Um, I've had a 3.14 reading, three pounds, 14 ounces. It's right at four pounds again. So as long as it stays within a pretty solid um, poundage gap, then you're, you're good to go, but it's, it's not a problem to have slightly different readings every time you use it.